Hello everyone and welcome to the Immortal Gates of Pyre Break the Game Weekly number 10 for the Alpha Edition. I'm your host Dominic or Shadowfear, whichever you prefer. Joined this week by Seamus. How's it going, Seamus? Hey Dom, I'm excited. Uh, we had a really exciting patch that came out just a couple days ago. Uh, it's got a bunch of new stuff and I am very, very inexperienced in it. Now a couple of players have been really grinding it out, so gotta be some good matches for sure. Biggest change? Production is now cut in half, pretty much. So, yes. Oh, man. For those that... of you who are familiar, the way the production worked before, every single production structure gives 16 supply, which is enough to build somewhere between three and eight units in most cases. Mm -hmm. But it would also have the production capacity for that same amount of supply, which is fine. I mean, that, that made sense to some degree. But for various reasons, there's an experiment now of what happens if we only have it produce 10 supply worth. So yeah. a little over half. Which... Yeah, it's is a huge change yeah I, I i agree i uh i'm not speaking from the pers perspective of a designer uh i do think balance wise it's interesting to kind of reduce the pace of the game in certain situations i think it's fair um but it also has created interesting situations where um it's just such a different tempo right the players themselves are going to come up with different need to come up with different strategies if they want to adjust and sort of take advantage of the fact that uh, yes, you can still be fast, but you can't be as fast in terms of production as before. Exactly. So that is... Like, how people adapt to that is going to be interesting. I'm really curious to see how it's going to play out in the mid-game, especially, because that's where you start losing armies and they have to rebuild. And so being right. able to rebuild less yep. quickly, it's like, is that going to be an advantage? Is that going to, like, snowball the advantage for the people who already have the economic advantage? Or is that going to actually give people with a bit behind an economy a chance to catch up? Yeah, it, it is interesting. The implications kind of are, are far reaching. And uh, I don't know, like I, I I'm excited to sort of get the responses from some of the community members, see what they think, um, get some more insight into the developers uh, sort of reasons for these changes, because uh, Donovan, Kwame, Toby, uh, Travis, all the folks working behind the scenes on that, um, they did have the patch notes and such uh, sort of detailing the specifics and explaining the reasoning. Um, and then it's typically always been fun when I've been involved uh, just as a spectator of other games to see like how much the vision aligns with like how the players uh, execute mm. and how the game evolves. Uh, so I'm pretty interested to see it from the dev side too, right? Like how uh, too. how different this going to be. I think uh, the th part of the thinking is that they like this was how it worked in the prototype in Vanguard. Mm. You actually didn't have full supply production in Vanguard, so it's it does follow. At yeah, least in the, terms the, of, yeah, the historical context there is really important too, right? Uh, Vanguard obviously was a way for uh, the founders of Sunspear Games to test a high amount of design decisions, uh, and as we see them implemented over time uh, in our game, in Immortal here, and then some of the newer design decisions that they think are healthier for the game than older previous ones. It, it's like a really interesting just. Uh, it's like seeing, I don't know, like Dota created for the first time, like in life, right? Like, because <laughs> Dota started obviously as a Warcraft 3 mod. Um, yes, I, feel like most, I was most, there. A lot of big games that uh, started as a, yeah, I, I didn't get to experience that myself as a. Um, I barely a, got to. My computer just wasn't good enough to play Dota. Okay. Yeah. Like I, I, I tried dropping in a few times and it just chugged. Because having, uh, yeah. play, well, having 10 human players and all the AI stuff, yeah. Like, full yeah, 16 uh... players on a max size map. I mean, Dota, the entire design with Dota was essentially take everything in the Warcraft 3 editor and jam it together into a single game and make it work. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> when you do that, weaker computers are going to suffer. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, that's... that is not the case. This game is designed, not purely aggregated. Yep. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are into this. So, I want to take a look at the teams here. We've got Hydraulics teaming up with Magical up against Bemnex and Drago. Uh, Dom, if you don't mind, uh, what, what can you tell us about these two teams? Hydraulics and Magical are definitely the most experienced at Immortal. Like both of these players, Magical in particular, grinds out games like it's no oh, yeah. like they have nothing else to do. And Hydraulics, well, they don't play as much. They are still been a very strong player to watch. Drago, on the other hand, they've been kind of on and off. You see them sometimes as Boomercraft posting videos, but I haven't seen them on at least looking for game very often. And Bennex mm -hmm. is a very strong StarCraft 2 player who has dominated tournaments in the past. But hasn't I haven't seen play a lot either. So we have two very experienced immortal players versus two very experienced strategy game players who 
aren't quite at, don't I don't think are quite as experienced with Immortal specifically. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, Bemnex also very commonly has teamed with Scruffy in the past. That's uh, right. And both, I think Scruffy is also a GM in StarCraft. Yeah. They're, uh, they are very good at the games. And I believe they were sort of part of the folks that entered as we, uh, during that alpha wave, right? A couple months ago. That's right. Um, in the spring. And yeah. When we if I'm not mistaken, OTK they thing. won more than one event, at least one event, uh, as a team. So I'm curious yes, to see they how were, they were the, kind of pretty much the strongest there. team. I just have not mm -hmm. seen a lot of play from them. I just haven't seen a lot of activity from them. They might be mm -hmm. playing just randomly finding games, just not the Discord. That's yeah, the main one. Yeah, I know. Um, and the fact that it's a new patch too, right? Uh, it had been a little bit, a bit of, of a dry spell in terms of uh, updates uh, as the team was focusing on some other priorities and a lot of backend work. Um, however, something that you mentioned before, obviously, was the production, but another significant change, and we see that sort of reflected in the uh, picks, the Immortal picks here, uh, Mala and Ajari got some pretty nice reworks. Oh, we're going to be seeing those. Just, yep. They, uh, just you wait. Once we get some fire going, no, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see, guys. <laughs> you will see. It's pretty fun. Speaking of that pyre acquisition there, coming in the uh, middle of the field here for uh, Hydraulics and Magical. We did see Drago get a little bit earlier, so basically across the board, the values are even. But uh, we'll see whether or not Hydraulics and Magical, as they have a pretty large grouped army here, if they actually want to go for an aggressive play. Looks like they do. We might have the first, the first combat. Ooh. Certainly going to be pressure coming in from the blue team. The cutoff. Oh, this is dangerous. So, Safari. Deliver from evil. There we go. It's yeah, Team there it Zoom. There we go. <laughs> so, All right, so... So to explain what was going on, the change has been that Mal and Ajari now have several abilities which will summon them onto the battlefield. At the moment, Ajari is Teapot Orzum because it's placeholder art, but that was Ajari being summoned yeah. on, delivering the units directly. That is, it's not just an aesthetic change because a lot of the abilities, you can actually move the summoned immortal around to provide extra shields, or like for, in that case, it's providing shields to things nearby. There's another one that will just provide shields. Heaven's Aegis is now a normal ability which provides shields to units near Ajari as she moves around. Mm -hmm. oh. So the positioning of uh, the Immortal actually matters a lot, which is really yeah, cool because positioning just is the thing that makes strategy games work. Yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting too because it sort of blurs the line of what a hero unit is. It's not actually a hero unit, right? You don't keep it in the game the That's entire right. time. It doesn't level. It doesn't necessarily kill units in individually. Um, but it's it's there and it's it's what you are playing as. That power fantasy of being a, you know, godlike semi uh, demigod in certain situations uh, is. Oh, I'm so excited to sort of see it take this next step and, and Just, to continue forward as it evolves. I mean, it's about as much the Deus Ex Machina as you can get in the most literal sense. Literally, right? Like especially with the jar, you just <laughs> yoink. You're like just, goddess yeah. comes in and just kind of sets you back. Literal and historical sense, because that's how they did it with the Greek plays, is they'd have, like, the person playing the god be basically winched down into the stage. So it just feels like the same thing, and I'm just dropping from the sky. Ah. Yeah. I love it. It's great. Uh, well, uh... It's always good when you get Greek tragedies involved some into something. <laughs> is Elevation, that it? That is that, more. like, the key to success? <laughs> any any yep. sort of entertainment product, whatever, is always going to be successful. Oh, speaking of success, Drago now in trouble here, because he's actually low on Pyre. I'm not sure if he has enough to get the escape button. However, he is pressing forward with the Sapari force. They don't have uh, the escape button. This is a lot of Sapari. Like, this yeah, this is a. Well, the most arts coming in, it's going to be sure. tougher. They have over gotten an infusion of fire. Thanks oh, to wait, much for the he's got enough. The they wait. have enough. Oof, they have enough. They Yo, oh my goodness! The process. Okay. That was brutal. Only three Sapari left of the ten that came. Ugh, yeah, that's... that was, uh, and not really much economic damage, right? So ultimately... Not really, no. A bit of lost mining time. Nothing Another worth attempt, ten... but... Nothing worth seven Sapari. Right, right. Like, that was, uh... Draco is known for doing some crazy aggressive stuff, but I don't know about this. Oh, we see Mala coming out on the battlefield oh. there. That is the full art. That is actually Mala. She is not animated, but she is not Teapot or Zip. Um... And she is providing a buff for her teammates right now, I believe... That is the That's one the, where, uh, that might have been the vampires in effects, where you can get lifesteal based off of your kills, right? Uh, yep. I'm not entirely life sure. Lifesteal based off kills and units that die become kill. Yeah, yeah, and, and then yeah, the, Red of Harvest of blood. is the name of the ability. 
Yeah, uh, Reign of Blood is the sort of iconic ultimate of hers we've seen before. Uh, also significantly reworked in its presentation, uh, but the idea is quite the same where Mala shows up and then in that AoE radius, you'll see her provide um, quite a bit of regeneration. And then of course there's a brand new ability, which is the Prophet's, the Prophet's Favor, I believe it's called, where units that die will cause your units to be upgraded. Like, just to get yeah. bigger oh. and get 30% boost on everything. That is brand new. I don't know if... I, I hope we're going to see that, because... Otherwise, I spoke too soon. But I'm sure we're going to see it, because it seems like a pretty busted ability in a big combat. Yeah, just looking at the effect of that, I couldn't have wrap my head around it initially, and I was like, wait a second. If this actually works, the upgraded units could be incredibly powerful. But uh, right now, Bemex and Drake are being aggressive. Hydraulics and Magical with more power to play, though. Yeah, dropping out the Mark Prey. And that does give a little bit of damage advantage. All oh, right. already... Again, there's the Red Harvest. Kittle popping out for Hydraulics. Just at least helping them a little bit, though. The army value for the red team is high enough. This is not going to work out. Rain of Blood as well has dropped here. Sorry, not Rain of Blood. This is, in fact, Prophet's Favor. <laughs> yeah. This is what I was exactly talking, talking about. The upgraded yep, units yep. with all the red dots on them. That is Prophet's Favor. That is the and upgrade coming in here for, for Bemnex. And that's taken out the... That... <laughs> Like, it was a huge investment of Pyre to take out a third, but yeah, th but it's, it's paid worth off. It, man. Look at oh, this! Yeah. Look at this! The army, the army is just so strong and supported well enough by the Pyre effect that at this point they were able to get the third. The absolvers essentially untouched and are amazing at just mowing down buildings. Not too shabby at killing units either. But right now, it feels like Bemnex and Drago are in complete control of this first game. The only saving grace potentially being that there's several units that Hydraulics and Magical have outside of the base, a base that a Magical has that hasn't been slotted yet. And the upgraded units have been wiped out by resonance built by the blue team. So the effects of the Pyre have faded. Just yeah, we'll the see The damage now. has been done. Yeah, the, 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 the damage has been done. Hydraulics in general has been pretty low on his army value throughout this game. And we're nearing the 10 minute mark and it's still not gotten any better for him in a Magical. Honestly, at this rate, Dom, we might not even hit the 10 minute mark because Bemnex and Drago are continuing to push. They are now inside the main base of Team Ice. And the Resonance trying to find some room to siege up without being surrounded. They are struggling. One of them's gone down, a second one's coming up. This player's relying heavily on Resonance due to their splash damage, but it's just you need to have the positioning for them, and that's been a struggle. So far, it, Hydraulics has pretty much run out of bases. Magical, again, still has the extra one off the side. But Hydraulics is almost done. Coming in last ditch attempt. Offering Masked Hunters are able to get rid of a couple of Zolvers. It's just the rest of the army that's the problem. Yeah. And this army has not really been thinned out whatsoever. We see a couple of units, but it feels like every time one dies, two replace it instantly. And there will be the GG call from Hydraulics. That will be game one going over to Bemnex and Drago. It's just magical being a little bit stubborn, but yeah, that is that is gonna be it. So well played to them. I mean, again, they are definitely the the very experienced players for strategy games broadly, and it's good to see that they've just pulled in. Like they come in here, they've figured out the systems well enough, quickly enough yeah. that they've managed game one. But we'll see what happens in game two. The adaptation is what the next map is. It's a few few things that can change between games. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting to, to note the fact that on an individual level, I think out of the four players in this lobby, um, my bet would be on Magical toe-to-toe -to -toe winning any 1v1 head-to-head -head matchup. But in a 2v2 situation, uh, not only your individual skill comes into play, but also your ability to coordinate as a team. Uh, in the first couple of moments of the last match, Dom, you and I saw that Drago was kind of harassing individually, and it wasn't necessarily getting too much. But once Bemnex came in and they had the support, they were using their abilities together, uh, it just became too much for Team Ice to bear. Exactly. And that was... That led to the victory here. Though so I... Anyway. It's possible uh, Magical may have crashed. Uh, because I... I do not see him in the actual game lobby. Um, Maybe. So we're going to... Figure that out in just a quick minute. Well, actually, hopefully in a couple quick seconds, I believe. Um, yeah, he did crash. So we can confirm he crashed. Uh, however, that was after the game had already ended at that point. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, so that is going to be game one. It, yep. is, it is a valid game. It's good. Yeah. 
Uh, thinking about the, this actual this actual game that you and I are spectating, I think you and I both based in North America, right? Correct. Uh, yeah. And the we four folks that were watching close to each other, in fact. Uh, they, you're, you're on the Eastern Coast, aren't you? Uh, yep, I'm in DC right now. Oh, right, you are. You're, I thought you were in Oregon for some reason. Uh, I, I think cause... Drago. Drago's also an A, right? But the other three are European players. Magical, I thought was in Asia. All right, he's a... like he's... Magical I is from that Europe, but I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah, he's currently yeah. he's in a... somewhere in Southeast Asia. Yeah, yeah. So it's cool to see the fact just that we have folks from all over playing together. Um, and occasionally that can cause some ping issues, delays, whatever. But ultimately, like, man, I'm just excited, right? We've got literally three continents represented out of the four players participating right now. That's just cool. I'm trying to think time zone-wise. Well, Magical didn't get to sleep last night, but otherwise, we're fine. <laughs> it's like, time zones are annoying sometimes. But other than that, yeah. Now, at least the, the system is working. There's been a lot of a lot of work tech has done to make sure that the game runs smoothly for people with high pings. Yeah, our uh, our tech team is absolutely comprised of rock stars, uh, and ultimately, I'm excited to continue to see them put out this great work. I mean, even like with the with the this past update that we patched earlier in the week, right? Uh, the fact that we can finally see more from the art department as well, uh, the immortals visualized on the battlefield, the animations, etc. Um, from my perspective, working on some of the the event side of things, the marketing side of things, uh, it always is really, really awesome to see the things that people have talked about and that we've been planning uh, to mm -hmm. actually experience them and kind of realize how freaking amazing these things are. And, and our, my, our teammates are just, I don't know, it's, uh, it's cool to be here. And uh, man, I'm just excited. Like this is the upcoming months and just this patch are pretty exciting. I think they're very fun. Personally, I've seen a couple of folks who've been playing and talking to me about the patch. They've been having a lot of good, enjoyable experiences too, so. I'm very, very happy. I'm, I'm happy to enjoy it as a player, honestly. This is very exciting. Like, just on... Really, the, the change to production is... It's a small change. Well, it's a big change, but it's a subtle... It's a single change that we already saw. It did seem like it provided a bit more of a dynamic. Yeah, like the, it was, it right? It didn't... Because before, you'd often see these sorts of things where players would just build up a bunch of units and then throw them out there and that's it. We had a mm. ton. We had we had a bunch of on map combat, which I do not see very often in tournament matches. It comes yeah, occasionally, it's, uh, but it's just not. It wasn't like this. That's interesting. I'm I'm thinking back, and I, and I remember talking to Zard too about. Um, <laughs> he gave me a hypothetical for anyone who doesn't know Zard, uh, one of our super supporters, longtime Zard community is member, the, is the most passionate theory crafter of anybody here. Yeah. Uh, Actually, most passionate theory crafter of anyone I've seen in any game, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine he's up there. Uh, he and I were talking about the supply change last night as he was sort of describing to me the fact that he's put a lot of time into playing these games. And he's like, Simus, imagine at one point, all of a sudden, the enemy comes at you with like six behemoths, you know, at like the five minute mark or whatever, and they're upgraded. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, okay, I see, uh, I see why the production change, uh, right, because the behemoth is one of those that... Uh, is effectively a little bit slower to be produced at this point because you can only produce one uh, per structure yeah. as opposed to two. Yeah, that's a good change. As opposed to, say, the thrones, for instance, where you could only ever produce one. Although, is that true? Yep. That means... Yeah. Yeah, they don't cost nine supply, do they? Thrones do. Thrones cost nine supply, so that's not a problem. Yeah, behemoths were, uh, I believe, seven, which now is just gated by the ten. Exactly. I'm not mistaken. Although you can still drop in an arrow or still drop in a thrum. The yeah, the uh, I honestly, I'm I'm just kind of a I'm not a, a complete newbie, but I, in terms of my lack of experience, I typically just like spam the same unit right <laughs> across. Right. Like I build eight mass hunters, you know, four centauri, whatever. Uh, but you're right. The the mixing matching now obviously it was available before but now it becomes like even more important you know it's more that it's not that it wasn't available before it's that it was suboptimal before it's actually another mm. thing i noticed is that the way builders because the way that the economy works even from the beginning is that if you when you build a production structure mm -hmm. if you save up the money after building it for up one base you'll actually get just enough to have fully produced like an old system to fully produce you have 400 alloy which is what you need to build an entire production line Mm -hmm. 
But that meant that building anything else was generally a bad idea because it cut into what military you could build, which yeah, severely reduced yeah. the, the range of build orders. But now you can only spend about 250 of that alloy, depending on the, and give or take, like give or take 25 or so, which means you have another 100, 150 alloy that you could spend on an extra ether extractor, or you could spend on defensive turrets, or you could spend on saving it for the next expansion. I mean, yes, you're going to want to build the units on the second production wave, but by that point, you'll have gained, gotten more money. So you can just use that money for other stuff that can make you money or can keep you alive far more efficiently. But you also, there's the choices involved. Or even just build yep. a second production structure using, like you cut 100 into your production, but then you have two production structures. Yep. So you get, I just feel like you have more choices. We'll see how that plays out, but first on, on the for, on the face of it, it's like, it it appears to give you a lot more options without cutting into your production, or without cutting into your Here's ability hoping. to play the game. Well, uh, we'll see how the players adapt to it for sure. In the second game now, in our round one match, we are on embargo. Interesting counter pick. It's uh the specified 2v2 map obviously out of the few maps that we have in the game currently we have a couple that function both as 2v2 and 1v1 uh embargo is incredibly large uh has it's sort of iconic ancient in the center and the two turrets very very close to each other uh so i do find that it lends itself well to 2v2 specifically and uh i think it's an interesting counter pick from team ice from hydraulics and magical for sure they're clearly relying on having that space which Last game, they were, they started out quite aggressive. Yeah, they did, and right? They, uh, <laughs> you think but... you want a smaller map in order to take advantage of that. Right. Uh, interesting 3v2 fight going on. There are reinforcements coming from both sides, but I do feel like Ice has the numbers advantage here. However, the turret, uh, they don't want to give away this fire for free, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah, those spark, they're getting body blocked. The Bone Stalker's doing the job magical, just holding the line. There you go. There you go. More pyre for the team. They are, man, they are really on point on the whole map control thing. So far, Benix and Drago are not too far behind yet, but man, that's that's going to add up. Benix and Drago have not gone for the pyre themselves. This map doesn't have as much pyre, though. Like, it does just have yeah. these two camps plus the center ancient. It has some natural uh, turrets, but this is definitely the most pyre-starved map of the map set. I believe it actually has pyre miners on the complete outskirts uh, in the very sort of north. We see the Sapari force from Hydrox there. Uh, wait, am I trolling? I think I'm actually trolling. I no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's just the, it's just the, uh, it's just the three. turrets. Yeah. Man, so that's right. That's, that's oh. it. This is... That shows you how often I've seen a pyre go, honestly. It's probably my least <laughs> viewed map, both in playing and spectating it is personally. Like, it is 2v2 only. That's basically why yeah. like you, you we've tried playing 1v1 on it and no it's, it's best it's, that it's for 2v2 only yeah yeah the pacing uh the pacing takes a little bit uh too long at that point all right dom what is this going on over here we got three sashin just chilling up in the north of line uh the scouting slash maybe they have a more nefarious plan uh I'm scouting for sure because this is not an uncommon place he? to start building up a third no oh, way right. he's actually leap. going to do leap the a rats with Sasha, <laughs> leaping over the wall the oh, nice. has no idea what's going on oh that drago. was amazing i love drago oh I think of course one of course this. it's drago that would do but that that's, that's awesome this is supposed oh, to be a support man. unit people oh, it is a, oh my god it has a healing effect however this man is accusing it just this reminds me of my StarCraft I mean, it's, two days. You know, support it's... in the in the broadest sense. Mark Paving yeah, dropped down just in case they avoid, avoid oh, being removed. What? But hey, they got out. They got in. That was they amazing. got out. Welcome back, Drago. It's been oh, a couple weeks since we last see you in one of these events, and I am so happy to see you here. That was amazing. I just... I, I can't get the smile off my face now. <laughs> yeah, that was... It didn't get, like, the most done however no, but i've memes. never honestly seen that before a strike <laughs> like, team of just Sao realizing Shin. realizing leap can go over cliffs oh that was that was that was beautiful yeah that was amazing and, and they apparently he's not seeing that again <laughs> yeah he's sending more there and we can see that uh in general this more sneaky strategy of attack is the game plan for team fire as uh Bemnex is working on some rocks in the northern corner uh, there's also a strike force of Safari on this uh, far southeast side of the map, but I do not think they are going to be around for a little while. It's... Well, they tried. 
Yeah, they're gone. More importantly, the opening into the base from the swamp. Bamnex coming through with that. Uh, not going to find an expansion. Actually, the blue team has not expanded anywhere near there, whereas red team has started to build up their thirds. So yeah, this going has been forward, this is going to be a little oh. tricky. I believe that's uh, Mark Prey. But that is Mark Prey. That is magical yeah. dropping Mark Prey as a way of just, as a keep away tactic. Like purely a zoning move. Mm hmm. We can hear a couple of pings coming out. The Saushin are in danger at this point. Dervish and Zapari versus a number of Saushin. Uh-oh. He delivers there, and deliver gets used. Yeah, it pops Saush. nearly instantly. Can they get the one Saushin? I'm not actually 100% sure. I think it was able I to get out. I think it was able to get... Where'd it go? It was being near Acropolis. What the heck? Well, whatever. It found its way back. Yep. The, the Overall, the successful... Uh, Defense, though, by Ice there, as really there was hardly any real damage. And oh, look at this. Resonance set up with an increased range on the rootway. Ooh, Magical's, been talking, right now. Magical's been talking about this. Mm -hmm. Like, they have been going, they have been very, very adamant that Resonance are a unit to watch out for. Oh. Ooh. We can see the ability pop there. Big fight across the board, actually. Resonance still able to free fire, and that turret is enough to dissuade the aggression from ice. However, that is a massive, nearly 4k army size uh, in terms of army value for Magical here. So the pressure is on from fire. They've got to get some units to defend soon, otherwise they will be continuously sieged down. Not just that, they're gonna. It's a matter of time. There's underspawns coming in here. There's there's increased root wages being built up. These resonants are getting their range. They can take out the tower. Wow. Center has fallen for the red That's team. That's crazy. That's such an important turret too, right? Like smack dab in the center, grants you that vision slight protection in the face of the Ancient if it's taken at the 10 minute mark uh, and later into the game. Without that, that's uh, it's analogous to the four center squares in chess, right? The most important squares oh, yeah. on the board. And this is now in complete control of Team Ice. This is actually... One of the reasons why this is a really tricky map for 1v1, not just the size, but the fact that these turrets aren't held by anybody at first. So you have to deal with, like, getting... Th or believe they or not. And yep. you have to deal with that. You just, you can't... Because you see, like, the red red and blue turrets are handled just fine. They're off, they're off in the corner. So for 1v1, the center ends up being really volatile, which just adds to the weirdness. But in 2v2, the center is extremely static until one of those towers goes down. Uh-huh. Which is uh, exactly what's happened. A little bit of movement back and forth in the center of the map. I do want to note on the right side there is a single unit from Drago. Potentially going for some aerial harass. However, hasn't pulled the trigger on that just yet. I'm not sure if it's been scattered or not. But, look at this. Ice. Sort of the middle of the map here. Gonna break these rocks. And that is a juicy looking base. Uh-oh. Hey, it's Behemoths. Hey, yeah. it's Behemoths. The army's here, though. Drago, my mod to commit, goes for the head of his Aegis. This might be a fight. Mark Brown, top of the shielded units, top of the absolvers. Damage bonus versus shields. Who wins the damage bonus? Wins it out. Saushin are not able to heal up enough to make this work. And now, despite oh, no. Ajari's presence, no one is going to be saved. <laughs> Look at all those residents. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Along with the Wardens just decimating... Team Fire's army there, and they are not going to be able to defend this base to just add insult to injury. Single Behemoth, not really a threat at this point, but not really effective in the defense either. That is a critical strike by Team Ice. Now that opens up where well, they're going for the south base, to double check that that's not been taken, but more importantly, it opens up a path into the rest of Team Fire, or Red Team's base. Same yeah, and there's a coming in for magical. Or just we see a lot of mass streaming. hunters. Dom, we see all these mass hunters, but no actual wraith bros, no true dedicated anti air. Uh, I'm curious if we'll see that adaptation or if he thinks it's enough. Uh, because at this point, I'm kind of questioning if it's actually enough to deal with this mass of an army. I'm actually curious. We have not seen the use of Prophet's favor for Bemnix too much because that that's a big reason why the hunters are so powerful these days like can they get mm. upgraded on top of on top of the fact that they're cheap and have offering also, they can be easily uh, upgraded hey take a look here we can actually see the recall or the uh deliver from evil has been used because there was an attack at home base. that was so smart oh my goodness i love that ability I, deliver from evil by far one of the 
coolest abilities in my opinion when it comes to just outplay both offensively and as we just saw on the defense there. Mm -hmm. Expert play from blue team has allowed them to apply pressure onto Drago's base. From here, it's looking like blue team's still a little bit iffy. They had to pull back half the forces. And unfortunately, as much as, like you said, Deliver from Evil is a really great move for defense, it is not... I mean, okay, unfortunately. In order to keep it balanced, it doesn't teleport that many units. So <laughs> yeah, you end yeah. up splitting your army sometimes. Yep. We'll see now the Ancient has been started. If that bar is completely blue, that is a significant amount of pyre. There you go. Over to Team Ice. Able to push Whoa. their advantage there. But I do want to point out a sneaky base taken in the top left corner of the map. For now, the uh, army and the pyre in favor of Team Ice. But if they don't sort of keep track of their opponents, they might actually be falling behind slowly in the economy. That's always the trick, isn't it? you got to make sure that you're not... You're not letting yourself get too caught up with trying to destroy your opponent that you don't build yourself up. That being said, the blue team, they're... They're the ones to watch out for. <laughs> like, the problem for the red team is they're pressured on all sides. Like they yep. have to now break through. Any of the nearby oh. expansions are already taken by their opponents. Great hunt drops for magical. Oh, man, oh. they're going for it. This could be the killing blow. The ultimate's being popped right now. A big fight for this base. Our team fire able to defend. We can hear a lot of units going down. The fight is still on here. The Sentinels, the anti-air have arrived for team fire, but will it be enough to push this away? Dom, they're not holding back that well at this point. I feel like they're just losing too many units. Thankfully for them, Hydraulics has lost a few, but you're right. This is still, this has only been a Pyrrhic victory at best. If team, if the red team fire, red team was able to defend this, that's, not a whole lot of help for them. The behemoths are nope. at least providing enough support to push back, but the damage has been done, the base has been destroyed, and the economic game for Team Fire is falling apart as they have now... I think... Do they have any... They have still some in their main base. They have a bit Ooh. in the natural. It's just that it's... Again, expanding from here is going to require a fight. They lost the base. They lost the top left base... Top left, excuse me, to the Bone Stalkers of... Magical. They have a decent army now in the center. They might want to push their advantage because they know they're desperate. This could be it for them. However, they just don't have the army. Meanwhile, on the west, we see these bone stalkers have made their way into the base. They're not going to be uh, given a warm welcome. However, they will certainly cause a major disruption here and, yep, force the retreat. Nearly all the units from Bemnex pulling back. Which is ideal. Magical and Hydraulics in particular. Hydraulics did lose a fair bit of their army value in that last fight. They were definitely pushing the front. They were definitely the front lines there. So that gives them that chance to rebuild. The oh, one, boy. Like, draw, there you are. Magical is the one that has almost all of this economy going. They yeah. Like base after base after base. It's just magical. Hydraulics has taken three. Magical has about five, six, seven. <laughs> he is going to be, if he's not already, right? Just incredibly rich. Certainly the GDP on his end is going to be incredible at this oh, point. Oh, yeah. They could they just get a few extra, just spare production structures, just the extra production time, yeah. and go. Behemoths oh. are popping. And Last attempts Sentinels. to fight oh. off these expansions oh. are not working. The Sentinels didn't actually catch, catch the Behemoths there. Maybe a big miss. A lot of air rocks coming in. What are they going to connect with? The Sharu is the main target. Nothing. And they get saved. Well played. Team Fire now wanting to push this fight after that small win. Will it be enough, however? By breaking out supply around 100 for both teams so far. And oh my lord, look at the anti-air from the Castigators. Charu has gone down for now. The Behemoths are forced to retreat. There is nothing. Is there anything left for Drago? They have Sentinels, but that's not a threat. The Behemoths are there taking on the center tower. They do succeed at that, but at the cost of their own lives. There is a small consolation not. prize. We can see the giant upgraded behemoth in the center. Maybe if Bemnex can keep this alive for much, maybe it's a shot back in this game. But at this point, we're at the 15 minute mark and another ancient being attempted. That is back to back ancients, essentially as quick as the game allows you to take them. Four Team Ice here. And that ancient means 75 pyre to each member of Team Ice. On top of the advantage they already were enjoying. Oh, On man, top of the map the control stalkers. they've had. The Bone Stalkers were back at the base while this entire big fight was happening in the middle of the map. Magical has been amazing with the harass. Dropping the Mark Prey once again just to zone out anything trying to come in to deal with it. 
Slows down the Masked Hunters, splits up the army. And now this base is once again so heavily threatened. We are getting a Prophet's Favor here. To the very Actually, least, Dead Behemoth's army. Enough. Oh, another upgraded Behemoth, but it goes down! First upgraded oh, Behemoth is also being heavily threatened. It goes down. The rest of the Masked Hunters are trying, but they just can't manage. And Hydraulics and Magical turn that into a victory. Wow, well played. You know, I from the uh, moment that we saw the counter pick embargo coming out, it definitely seemed like something you mentioned earlier. Hydraulics and Magical, uh, in terms of individuals kind of game and skill across all games, uh, maybe they're not as good as Bemnex or Drago when it comes to like how high they peaked in other titles, but they've got the immortal experience, right? They've got that on lock, man. Going to the most 2v2 map we've got so far, uh, playing this beautiful macro game, and then bringing it back one-to-one. -one. Well, honestly, the thing to me is that that one bit where we saw the giant fight of, hey, throwing a bunch of resonance in here, throwing a bunch, like, trying to get the worthy off for the red team, and it just, it doesn't matter, because Magical has understood the power of resonance, the power of positioning them, they know how to set everything up, and that was a, that was a huge, that pretty much turned the game around. If the, if the first fight they had didn't do it, that second fight absolutely did. Yeah, that was uh, really cool, and I'm curious to see how they respond. Uh, Team Fire, that is, both Bemnex and Drago, because now they've got the map counterpick. Uh, what might we expect in this final game? Well, unsurprisingly, because of its kind of standardish nature, Lost Province is going to be the last map for this series. That no complaints there. That is certainly yeah, no, that's, that's the, uh, kind of universally that considered across like yeah the uh, standard map when it comes to just both two v two and one v one play. It is uh, the map and to ultimately, maps. yeah, I'm curious because uh, they lost game one there. So, or excuse me, they won game one there. So, are teammates able to adapt uh, to to take it back here? I don't know. I mean, this is that is the key question, isn't it? We have the game starting up. The players have decided their forces. What I saw. Are... I'm curious. We've, I think, is across both games, we've seen mala? the same loadout, immortal wise, right? Similar loadouts. I mean, magical. Yeah, magical. It's all in Mala for the blue team. I oh, know. Sorry, last time they had a jar on both sides. That's right. Hydraulics was a jar last time. That's where we're getting. We were getting Heaven's Aegis on both sides. Interesting. So. uh... Looking back at that first game, right, it was a little bit of early aggression from Ice, and then overall, Drago went in individually, and then mm -hmm. they went in together. Uh, that is Drago and Bemnex. Uh, I think that the overstepping uh, from Team Ice and the sort of skillful Ajari play from Drago specifically gave Team Fire the advantage there. Um, but we're not actually going to see that in this game. So... I'm... I'm I'm not really confused, but I am like curious, like what what Draco's thought process is here, and uh, I guess we'll just have to see it play out. Yeah, both of them going for Malo this time. No Ajari on the red team. Actually, very quick production as well. Not going to the fast expand, Jericho. Which means we got to keep hmm. an eye on them, as always. Yeah, Drago's Trixie. I think, in general, most players at the high end would agree that, uh, especially in a 2v2 two 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 situation, uh, and even in a Lost Province, going for your second expansion is... You, wait a second. What is... Maybe I'm wrong. I, uh, Magical the would not first agree with you. Both. Most yes. people would. Magical would not. Well, both Draco and Magical went for, for production first, for the altar, going for units. Yep. But also, Drake, our Magical's been talking about this. They are very convinced that early production is the way to go. Okay, that's interesting. I uh, yeah, I'll, I'll need to ask him about it. As as personally, I like I said, I my experience does not come nearly as close to understanding the intricacy of the game. And I think right now, Magical, uh, in terms of legacy status, Magical has been one of our top players in general, and is one of the people with the highest amount of sort of breaking edge current uh, meta technology. So. We'll see how this plays out. And at the same time, we do have a slight power advantage for Team Fire. So while Magical may have this breaking edge technology, they are going to need the resources to actually execute on that. Mm -hmm. You can see a Pyre being taken initially by Drago. So the one of the nice things about being able to build some units before uh, 
the opponent in general is just being able to contest pyre camps anywhere across the map. Typically, we do see the center oh, ones taken as whoa, we what? Uh, saw whoa, there. Whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, uh, <laughs> magical the soul foundry early, <laughs> like soul foundry before units. This is new. This. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. Okay. I I think they're just going, going to go for... mass. Like the, the main thing is they get the nurse set, they get the soul foundry. They love resonance. I'm calling mass resonant. Well, I mean, well, the rest of coming series. from the Amber Womb, uh, are, are you willing to lose that Sorry, much fire? I think one thing I'm critically... In. Yeah, no worries. The, uh, the Amber Womb itself allows oh, you to build the stronger units, but there's been so much investment in this, and Drago has just complete map control at this point, right? He's able to take the second one. He set some uh, second fire camp here. He set up the Blood Well, in fact, just for vision, I suppose. He even uh, has the... I believe that's upgraded at this point. Uh, nope, Vision, but also if they get into or... a fight there, that means Pyre for Drago. Because yeah, this is this is crazy. I I did not expect this whatsoever from either of these squads. And that's early Ikor okay, Ikor from actually magical. Okay, yep. I mean, Ikor they're early a nice area unit. They perform well. They're yeah, when it comes yep. to um, mass hunters. Oh, there we go. Upgraded structure from. Uh, Drago here. He is making his base here, and he is planting just his flag. He is <laughs> building his omnivores. Just that static D, right? Just say no <laughs> to uh, anyone coming into the a... south side of the center. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, Draco is. I love Draco, man. We'll see now, though, whether or not they can uh, get much of an advantage. As meanwhile, there are Icor in their base here. Wolf. That's the entire. Is that the entire alloy line? That is oh. the entire alloy line. One of the moats, or yeah. somebody that's able to escape, but they're still not mining. Value absolutely gained for magical there. A couple more Ikor coming around. This so uh, this is not this a fight that the mass no. hunters window. So no, you better call not. some reinforcements and back up real quick. And it looks like they will, but magical has gotten a lot of value out of this little squad of Ikor so far. Okay, what, what Drago? What? Hold on, buddy. How are you going to get the enemy to commit to fighting you in the center point of the map when you've got such a structure? Right? I might, might be a little redundant at this point. It's like, yeah, they're just going to go to the, the top like side. A, two separate strategies going on right now, and one team is entirely okay with ignoring the strategy of the other player. Yeah, they're just going for Pyre Miners. They don't care. Like, pyre Miners, Towers, in fact, they have, they're doing fine for Pyre and Harassment, because why not? Like, sure, you got the pyre, sure, you got this position, but what good does it do you if you don't have the money to build units with? Still, it does mean it's a fire base. It does mean that Drago and Bennick's a place to retreat to. That's mm. likely the thought. Yep. Which will like, which will be coming in right now. Hydraulics getting attacked in the main tower. Only a few Sapari, which they're looking to find the right way through. Heavens just gets mm. dropped, so the shields are set up. Interesting. Mark as well from Magical. Spread that damage boost. But Magical is nice. sending some units here and, and a little bit of reinforcements for the Sapari as well. But overall, I'm not sure about the commitment there because this army from Ben next to Drago is pretty sizable. Oh, you say that it was sizable. You were right. But now it's not so good for them. Everyone going for the Prophet's No, this favor. one, they, they, the Bala abilities, right? It was the, the oh, immortal yeah. cooldowns at this point coming into play. Like... Their opponents had just wasted some fire there and uh, they're able to get some advantage, however... You're right in noting the fact that their army overall is diminished from its initial force. Reinforcements kind of coming from all angles from Team Ice, but they are able to defend for the time being. Uh-oh. <laughs> there they go. No, don't push this. Again. Oh, man. The resonants are going to help. But it's, yeah. it's tough. They Okay, they're able to break the line. You know what? I... Maybe I was giving yeah, Omnivore that... too much credit there. Pull, uh, no, pulling a, jar, like, pulling a Jari down from the sky definitely did the trick. Mm. Like the extra shields and Zapari from Heaven's Aegis, I don't like. I think one or two of them might have died. It's pretty subtle, but it worked, and it really worked, right? At this point, Team Ice were able to uh, whatever plan Drago was planning, they thwarted it nearly in its entirety. And uh, Drago and Bemnex are essentially on the supreme back foot now. Drago has a ton. I mean, a ton of uh, available resources to spend here, but. He's got to actually build some units so he can protect his stuff because right now he's just wasting him. Or maybe oh, they have 
No, they're not wasting. They're, they're supply blocked. You're supply blocked. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's it here. They put all their uh, money into into the static D. I suppose they were not able to build those those uh, diminished capacity supply depots that that can still keep 16 supply but can't generate as much as quickly. Yeah, it can't produce. I mean, that's cannot produce him. as quickly. Right. But even right. With that taken into account, it's actually just even the 16 supply. Like, yep. When I say supply blocked, I don't mean production blocked. I mean supply blocked. They have 32 supply worth of units. They can only build 16 mass hunters. Period. That well. was a major problem, which now means Team Ice can just drop in here. Yep. The Resonants are going to be the main threat. And that's actually significant. Ooh. All the Sapari going down. That entire Sapari force, which was the backbone of this army, has been eliminated. Or, at the very least, cut down to a size that is not a problem for Team Fire to deal with. That From is here... some spicy business there. Good defense oh, yeah. overall. And, uh... You gotta think that that's something that Bemnex and Drago are very happily to accept because it really gives them a position back nearly on even footing again, I would say. A little bit behind overall in terms of army economy and uh, presence, but they're back now, in it and they are pushing forward. It's It gives them an opportunity to expand. Yep. The expansion, however, has... They have to deal with the fact that their opponents have eight bases between them and they only have six building up now or the fifth and six building up so it's gonna come down to how well they can position away from the resonance just avoid that splash damage that's been wrecking them. yep that being said blood wells being set up now with resonance on the high ground this will be a much better position for benix and drago to hold same time with that. Going with the pyre like just get the pyre miner don't worry about it like you just, you want you want to throw a jari down a few more times drop your shields it's just fine. Bemnex, it's all good. Game wants to do that. Bemnex and Drago are basically setting up the exact same play as before. This time it's Bemnex, uh, not Static Deep, but instead setting up the Resonance. Not investing as much here, but I do like the Blood Whale being aggressive in its position um, as a concept, right? Because you're able to uh, right. set up if you need to. It's not really that heavy of an investment in terms of cost. Uh, it will be flushed out as we see Fire is actually sending their troops to defend a strike force of Sapari. But meanwhile, Ice might be going for the killing blow here. They are pushing for it. Char, who are on the field. And no kills, here... though. Not, not too much damage, but they are forced away, right? There's no way they can win this alone. Not easily. Oh, Karath my lord. Is... How many resonances? Karath is tricky, though. <laughs> it's hard to count them out numbers-wise. Yeah, but, oh, jeez. I'm not going to try to even bother how many resonants there are right now. Between the resonance from Magical and multiple Sharo here with their awe strikes. Uh, and the underspines for good measure. Just have that extra range. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, Zone Bemnex and Draco, right? they've got a decent, decently strong army. However, they really have to micro this perfectly if they want to win. They have the pyre. Drago has 150 pyre. They can drop a rain of blood if they want to get that stuff healed up. They have a decently sized army to make that work. I mean, they weren't shy with setting up the Prophet's Favor and Red Harvest before. It's not like it's a big problem. So both there's definitely enough pyre that Team Fire can get in and make this even. Rain of blood! There it is! Yep. Drago dropping it down. Big commitment. And that's good heal set up. It's a lot of regen for fire. However, they really need to find value here. They have not been playing the macro game as sort of uh, long game focused as their opponents have. They are trying to get value out of taking out this third expansion. The question is, can they actually do it, Dom? The answer remains to be seen, though Heaven's Aegis dropping down will help out Hydraulics. And the Resonants are able to come in. The Force from Bemnix and Drago, no longer supported by the by Mala's Reign of Blood, and it is going to be going down. Despite their best efforts, this Force from Team Fire simply cannot break. Wow. Yeah, that was a really nice defense there. Team Fire just trying to retreat, taking a pretty significant blow. If they are evil, even able to defend the onslaught here, we'll see whether or not Ice decides to push it farther. You've got to imagine they will, as they are just barreling down with their advanced, aggressive, upgraded units. They've got like 80% total of map vision across the board compared to Team Fire, which is comparatively much, much, much 
uh, less spread across and that's the it. map. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. GG, the comeback. 2-1, Team Ice. Mad Hydraulics and Magical will be moving on to the winner's finals. Congratulations to them, as that was a very well-played game. Oh, yeah, that was... Uh... It's interesting when you, when in any competition, right, sport, esport, whatever it is, uh, there are times when you play your strategy, there are times when your opponent plays your strategy, sometimes your strategy is better, uh, and sometimes you don't play into their strategy. From what we saw in that last game, I feel like Ice, uh, Magical, and Hydraulics just had a better strategy and they executed it overall much more efficiently, right? Uh, going for the really early upgraded tier 2 units like you suggested, Totally paying dividends for them there. Which is great to see, personally, because I think that... I, I like that playstyle. Yeah, mm. it's kind of cool. Like, I, I mean, what... Well, let's see, Icors get more representation, but the idea... I liked it. It was... It was a interesting variety from what we've seen before. Yeah, as it, uh... As it stands, we've seen a couple of different metas kind of throughout the game, and, and I do like to see, like you mentioned, that variety. Uh, being able to choose, right, have that diversity. Uh, I want to amass a, a lot of tier one units very quickly, a lot of infantry. I want to build into the later tech, right, which is uh, occasionally called like tier three, sort of like stronger aerial units, uh, or going for more the um, tier two style with, I mean, the residents, I don't want to call them a utility unit because they're not, right? They are long range, high damage, splash, uh, but they are not, to me, seen commonly as a kind of effective mainstay of an army. Uh, however, in that case, sort of going for a couple of i to be aggressive early and harass, and then into the resonance just worked out beautifully for Magical. And it was honestly a bit of a risky move. Yeah? I mean, it's... You don't you open up, you don't have anything to protect against much. You have your teammate that can help, but if your opponents did... if Drago and Bemnex did go for a hard production. They might actually manage to to deal enough damage to make that turn out. Hang on. Yeah. All right. So it looks like the uh, next match going underway right now. There's, uh, I believe, it is Hydra and Spock being up against Umbadon, uh and Deke Jim. Jim, and then we've got. The Walter team, comprised of Scruffy and Santa, uh, to follow. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with Hydra and Spockling. Apparently there's been some difficulty getting the game going. One, I believe Hydra and Spockling got one game. Okay. So. Uh, Spockling... Let's see, it's part of the issue with uh, me subbing in to, to broadcast a cast along. Uh, you or anyone else not to be as readily available for administration. Um, right. But we will get into that game in just a couple of minutes, guys. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to follow the channel. Uh, Dominic, I know, uh, I believe you are giving out a couple of keys as well, right? Hmm? Uh, but yeah. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Mortal Gates of Fire, we've got a community Discord. Welcome back, welcome back. Anyway. You all set? Yeah, I'm all set. Uh, cool. Probably well, uh... Get a phone call, but okay. Let's see. So, it looks like the match is underway. We'll get into that in just a couple of minutes. And, uh, we'll continue the tournament then. Uh. Okay, we're good. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Immortal Break the Game Alpha Weekly number 10. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and I once again have Seamus still here. How's it going, Seamus? It's good. I'm pumped. All right. Yeah, we, uh, so we're coming back, right? We just saw a really cool best of three with Hydraulics and Magical making it to winners' finals. Uh, and now we will see who their opponents will be. I mean, we saw this. 
I oh my was like, lord. The whole the whole thing with the Dominic. Like, I cannot believe you've got live replays going. You're oh yeah. But it's like just that blood will. That whole blood will setup. I don't know, man. Drago. I mean, it got broken down, sure, but still. That was that was some serious cool stuff. Yeah. It's gotta so, make uh, that a thing. I mean, Buzzfeed quiz time. After the update this past week, what immortals do you expect to see out of these four players? Uh, Jari and Mala. That's, yeah, that's the, my, the that's my ones, guess. Right? The family that's feud fair. game. That's fair. That's fair. I think it's funny. Uh, typically, Orzum has been like the, the immortal. Uh, but now that we have the uh, immortals shown on the battlefield, right? Ajari and Mala, the updated ones, like you mentioned. Uh, I think there's going to be honestly, a, Orzum. Orzum got hit double hard. So really? Ajari got buffed. Yeah. See, so here's the thing. Ajar got buffed, which if you want to play, okay, the mentally Hydra still wants to play Orzum today, but still, <laughs> when you want to play Orzum, you're playing Karat. So you're either playing Orzum or Ajari. Now, Orzum is often played because Antari are really strong as a way to really apply pressure, especially early on. So two things have changed. One, Ajari just has amazing abilities. Like her, the pyre abilities alone massively improved her. But also the production change means that you cannot do the old four or eight Zentari pillar pushes. You can't do those. Yeah, They're done. true. Oh, man. You can only build two at a time, which means you cannot do Zentari cheese the way you used to be well, able to. Right, right. The, the, you that can do it, like you the can, way you can used... do it in a slower way, in a more measured way that has, gives your opponent more time to respond. But you Ooh. cannot do it in the way you used to be able to, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Like, that is, that is what is going to make it very difficult for Orism to find a place in this patch but until they get... Because, I mean, Orism and Zul are due to be reworked as well. Also, we're in Fool's Bay today. Or this I'm so excited. Yeah! So, Fool's Bay, my favorite map. Yeah, uh, I don't know how biased casters are supposed to be, but I think in terms of map bias, we've seen every map today, and personally, we have. Fool's Bay is my favorite. Let's go. Yeah. I mean, it's, we're not biased against the players or anything. We're biased. It's, you know, the yeah. map is even. Everyone, everyone plays in the same map, because... That's how video games work. <laughs> Box, no items, final destination. Oh, but I play Sheik. Really? Actually, I play I Zero Suit, that. so I have a hard time playing oh, Melee Oh, wow. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. I like Zero Suit. <laughs> Sheik's sick, too. So, um, I learned something yesterday. Or maybe it was earlier this week, Dominic, which is actually like, super, super important, and it's a note I want to make for anyone playing on Fool's Bay. Uh, take a look at the second base, the second expansion that... uh. Sparkling uh, Blue Wolf King is going for. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that is a 3,600 base, people. Uh, it provides 3,600 alloy over your, its uh, lifespan, right? Compared yeah, your 6, to 6,000s the... are the corner, and this yeah, one right yeah. here. So, I I understood that we had that dynamic on other maps, and I didn't even think about it until someone pointed it out to me. Thank you, Zard. Um, yeah, you have that protection, right? It seems interesting, and it seems like naturally you might want to gravitate towards that innate natural turret that you're given at the start of the game, mm -hmm. but you ultimately get a little bit less value in terms of overall lifetime of alloy. Which I like as a trade-off. Again, this is my favorite yep. map. <laughs> yeah. There's reasons it, for that. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. Uh, a lot of pings from, I believe, every player, like both teams at least, uh, but not any corresponding... There you go again. All right, there's the attack. First... First pyre setup for for Blue Wolf Kling and Hydra. For yeah, I know um, some folks Spockling. play in voice chat. I, I'm curious if some of these players are simply playing with pings. That's great to see it actually like use as intended, right? Uh, oh, even yeah. as early as it is, these alpha pings that we've got, um, getting the job done. Good stuff. They've got good designs. You can you can see what they're doing. Like little arrow, go over here. A little yeah. attack thing, attack this thing. Big credit to uh, Culture there. I believe he did the. Majority of the work when it comes to Oh pain. no, something's wrong. This is a thing we have to concern ourselves <laughs> with. What does an exclamation mark and a wing sound make mean? <laughs> yeah, it means you've things. been spotted. Get in the box. Get in oh, the car box. Get in the box, Snake. <laughs> snake. So yeah, those are great pings. Very, very, very appreciated. So it's worth noting, Santa and Scruffy are in the voice chat, so we're not going to see as many pings from them just because they are, they are mm, talking. Okay, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, a Although little we bit of... Although we're still seeing some. <laughs> we see the backup or the, the fight ping, potentially. However, while this distraction force from uh, Spockling is moving in, 
Uh, excuse me, it's not really even a distraction force. Sparkling and Hydra are going in aggressively in this, this army, and Hydra, meanwhile, is in the base. They've got one set up for harassment. The front line as well, just makes their opponents not sure what to do. Force the mineral line on the natural to be unmined. But Santa Claus has plenty of masked hunters. They can just push this away. They have no problem saving their base. Interesting. I can see uh, over on the right side of the map, the pyre being taken here by Hydra as well. And I remembered, right, Embargo, the map we saw earlier today, one of the 2v2 maps. Um, yeah, that, that only had a couple of pyre camps like we mentioned, but it's Fool's yeah, Bay, which this... has these pyre miners in the yeah, far, these over far here. corners. Mm -hmm. It also has a little rock splitting out the only double ether base outside of your main. Yeah, those rocks are funny. We've had some interesting bugs with them. Oh, wait. Did they not see them? I don't think they did, Dominic. Doesn't look like it. That was uh, on the edge know. of vision for both sides. Yeah. Bones coming in. Same time as the front line bone stalkers, so the distraction has been set. The main harassment needs to just come in here, Hydra. Focusing the bone stalkers. Doesn't the Wait a second. The is not coming in, but at the same time, they uh, don't care. Oh, Icar is potentially being moved, not as a hotkey group, but all army. Because those Bone Stalkers should have been dead to rights, but they're able to get a significant amount of damage done. And the Thrones, meanwhile, the main force is attacking. How will this play out? We've got the Kittle set up. We have Red Harvest. Yep. Oh, Popping the uh, ability there means that it's probably going to be a pretty firm commitment here. I don't know if Ice is able to respond in kind to defend this base. You can see the cancel. We see that cancel. We see that healing coming from Santa Claus. They lost hardly anything in the process. They gained all the map control. And curiously enough, it looks like those Thrums didn't go for any measured harass. Instead, they were trying to chase down Ikor. Yes, Thrums are quick units, but they're not actually uh, able to outspeed Ikor, especially after that upgrade. So this is uh, a interesting and a dangerous position for Team Ice here. Oh, dangerous is putting it lightly. Oh, they just lost entire alloy line. The only units that are going to be stopping this are the Resonance, and there's only two of them left. Or left is a broad statement, but there's only two of them available at the moment, and it's still enough. It still does give Scruffy oh. pause. There's Taking a look, uh, the main force from fire is harassing ice, and meanwhile, Hydra has tried to get those thrums in there, but the moat defense was good. We saw Scruffy pull back the majority of its moats, and already there are wraith bows on the way. So the unit composition is certainly in favor of Team Fire for now, and look at that. Look at that army, Dominic. The harass from the Icor just unrelenting. It's so beautiful. Oh, so my lord. So many Icors. Your definition of beauty, my friend, is potentially a disturbing one. Certainly if you're a fan of Team Ice here, as the Icor are simply not stopping. Some of them are going down, but the damage is continuing to come across. For the record, I'm on Team Icor. Okay, okay. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're uh, they're cute units. You know, I can I can see why you like them. They're cute. They're and fast. They, are. they they're really finicky, but they can do a lot of damage when used right. Yeah, they uh, will get thinned down eventually. But holy moly, all that damage that they dealt right, economic damage to the worker lines. There's still two of them alive, by the way, and the time they are wasting, forcing Hydra and Sparkling oh, to respond consistently. Look down. at that. They're Ooh. they're not stopping. So many dead mo- Oh, that's- Okay, only half of them died. Uh, that's what, like, half of their entire mo- Yeah, that was- That wow. was a significant amount of value. That. Uh, like, for that yeah, many Icors, taking out one alloy line is paying for themselves. <laughs> that was, I, like, two and a half. Yeah, I love how interesting the, the state of the, the flow of the game is, too, right? Because you look at the supply and the economic uh, value of the army, the army value that Scruffy has. He lost all his Icors, so his supply seems low and his army value seems low. It does for now. However, the overall macro, right, the pacing of the resource collection that he slowed down, if he's able to uh, accurately multitask, then he can build units much, much, much faster now than his opponents for, you know, a considerable amount of space. That's sort of a question of how well they're going to execute on that potential. Yep. Seen it is, it is a, the, ooh. Meanwhile, actually, a big fight here. I just forced away. Two, two residents already gone down. Yeah, that was That's a pretty around. big hit there. Uh, actually, that just, that just going enforces back to the, that potential you were talking about. Like, yeah, like going back to the Icor press, right? Uh, 
Dom, I personally, I like the Iron Core. I haven't used them as much. Um, can you, like, I, to my understanding, if you're not able to continuously expand your macro while you're actually doing that harm to the enemy, I feel like it, we might end up in an awkward situation where you uh, aren't really flexibly expanding enough, right? You're not actually pushing that That's advantage. Gen yeah, you're right. That's generally true. You, you want to be expanding while you're attacking like that. Mm hmm And that's, we did see that from Scruffy. That they absolutely set up their, they set up their non-clock expansion, they had their natural, made sure that's protected. Though, could they have gotten another expansion? Maybe. It's, mm -hmm. bearing in mind that they had to also switch off, like, they were changing their entire army. Like I said, I'm for a resonant wraith bow. Mm, true, true. Yeah, the, uh, scaling up there, trying to deal with the thrum. Exactly. And also just trying to deal with the fact that, you know, those Ikors are not going to last forever. And your opponents are going to have something to answer to that. You got to answer to their answer. And Scruffy did that, so I think Scruffy's in a good position. And the fact that they destroyed the yellow ones—I mean, they still have that potentially we were talking about to build up. They have the space to get their economy stronger, to get their units stronger. And the army value does show it to some degree that Scruffy did lose a bit of the Icors, is building back up, is focusing a little bit on their economy more so right now, and that should pay off in about a minute or two. And we'll see if they have a minute or two to play with, though, because Ice is making some deep moves into the center of the map. They are going to come across some opposition, but they haven't seen them just yet. Oh. Here it comes. The Ancient is popping in five seconds. Dropping the Mark Prey. That is oh, a huge problem hunts. there. Rain of Blood coming in here. So the entire force in Team Fire able to just hold the center while Hydra's Force coming through a choke point, getting messed up, getting Birthing Stormed as well. The Ancient is down, but it's not the main focus. Get rid of their opponent's forces, then take out the Ancient. That's the idea for Team Fire. And another Birthing Storm, forcing the rest of the units to get out of the center. Team Fire has full control of the center, has the Ancient. Team Ice coming in, trying oh. to find one last shot. Maybe, just maybe start holding it back, but no. Yet another Birthing wow. Storm says no. That was incredible. I, I, I'm not entirely sure how we saw Team Fire win that so handily based off of the fact that it was the... Uh, the flank initially started. It looked favorable from Ice. It did, but the problem for Ice was that one choke point. Like, Hydra having to move all mm. units to the choke point when their opponents already had Rain of Blood dropping. They had full control over the center, and they were set up. Like, Resonance don't do as much damage while moving, so that was providing a lot of problems, and they don't, against into Sieged Up Resonance, into all the... That's the forces into the birthing storms coming in there that could easily hit them because again they are in a choke point at that point it was basically 1v2 and hydra trying to trickle in reinforcements yeah that's a rough blow favorable position but i think you're absolutely right did not work out the way they wanted to and now we'll see how they respond meanwhile the uh, the throw on the left side have really been kind of just cashing in their you know nine to five without actually doing any work however i the think uh, i just worried that there's not enough like right exactly like the aerobores are set up right um so looking at uh conditions to victory here how could you see ice coming back well there's a couple expansion like this expansion over the three o'clock and mm -hmm. with a with a little bit of finagling the expansion over to the northwest would be expansions they could take heck even this third here they could take at least the 3 o'clock without too much risk, assuming they keep it hidden, and they've got enough map control mm. to enforce that. So at the very least, that would even them out on economy. From that point, it'd be a matter of tr just cutting off their opponent's vision and then setting up expansions. A little bit riskier, but they will need to do that at some point in order to get back in. That being said, their mm -hmm. army value isn't that far behind their opponents. Okay, yeah. So it's, yeah, that it's not like it's, it's not hopeless by any stretch. Yeah. They, I think uh, in terms of the behemoth, that's a very significant number of behemoth there. Uh, Fire really needs to respect them. Well, they had the Wraith Balls already, so some preparation was made. It's just whether it's enough, well, that's what the next battle is going to show since I only behemoths are definitely Oh, is that the Seasonal going to go down? Yeah, it's getting outraged by the Resonance. That's funny. Goodbye. <laughs> I mean, Mala has Resonance too. Yep. Now Only one seeds wrong, so no kind of land. kind of a bit of a loss, but not like crazy investment. I thought I was cute though, trying to get that set up. At the same time, we have openings made into the center. 
Just to prevent that same choke pointing problem we saw in the previous attempt to get to the center from Team, oh. Fi or team Ice. Oh, Mark Ray oh. dropping! On top of the birthing storms! The roots! The combo! Team Fire maybe oh. just decimating the behemoth here! Wiping them out completely There's with the birthing storms! He's so low! It can't do anything. I was gonna mention how there was this calm before the storm. It had been quite a while before we'd seen any real combat. And then in like five seconds, this huge victory in that fight for Team Fire. And they might not be done yet, Dom. Well, the Dread Sisters are getting their charge back up. Rain of Blood gave them the ammo back. They can just oh, keep man. going. That is brilliant. I love it. Those upgraded Immortal Kids coming into play. Team Ice on the back foot, certainly gonna lose this expansion here. Trying to do the best what they can with their army. They've got a big army though. Birthing Storms, the Birthing Storms. So, and some roots on top of that, cause why not? But that's just thinning out the army and that's too much. Yep. Ice and Spockling throwing the towel and the Walter team take the first game. Team Walter there. That was a surgical game. I loved how just, uh, they, they got, Challenges along the way, right? They had to deal with the thrum. They had to deal yep. with a little bit of harass back yep. and forth, right? They were technically the ones being flanked. Like the enemy team was kind of across their line of scrimmage. But every challenge that they had, they just completely overcame. And just in that last couple of moments, that really big fight. Oh my God, that was such a beautiful vice combo. Uh, just decimating the behemoths and pushing the game from there. Perfect use of the new abilities. I am so happy we got to see it. I'm yeah. just happy we've been able to see, like, really get the new stuff showcased. Yeah. Because that's it, been exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I love, uh, from my perspective, as one of the folks at the team, it's interesting because it's the farthest the game has come in terms of how it, like, plays, how it feels, the experience, right? How and it I'm looks. also like, hmm, like, how can we improve this, right? Uh, I'm excited, like, about the future in terms of, like, certain upgrades on, like, clarity. Uh, but, man, just visualizing that one-two combo just... Mm, chef's kiss. <laughs> players discussing map right now. Yep. And uh, admin suggesting that uh, the players no, respond saying, with if any you don't, map. If you specific. don't give me an answer, I will give you Frontiers. Which, like, um, for pick anyone a map. who's unfamiliar... Oh. oh, no, I can't. Okay, never mind. Yeah, technically Frontiers is no longer a uh, big viable choice. Okay, but in that case, <laughs> if I do have the choice, I will make a fool's... That'll make a Fool's Bay if I have the option. If it's, yeah, if it's Admin's Choice, Fool's Bay's my yeah. favorite. Fool's Bay, let's do it. Beautiful map. Yeah, Frontiers is a, oh man, a lot of history Front on that map. And Frontiers is a test map that yeah, has, exactly. has served us well, but we have better maps now. Exactly. Served its time, and uh, the less we see of it in the future. <laughs> you say that like it was a pet. <laughs> So do we, did it serve its time or do we serve our time? No, no, no. I, I'm honestly, I'm, I like Frontiers. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not someone to speak about the legitimate competitive environment when it comes to the high end level of play, and I understand why it's like not it's good as a competitive match. It was a proof of concept, right? Um, but I don't despise it like we've I seen don't, in some. I don't actually folks. for for being a test proof of concept map. It's, it's they fine. put a lot, put a decent amount it's of work fine. into it. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. Personally, I've also had like a lot of footage that was recorded on that map, so that's true. My yeah, affinity may drop connection. from there as well. That makes sense. Okay, back on the bay though. We uh, out with the old, in with the new. The new favorite, seamless approved. Uh, Mala Mala, a Jari Zol. So we have triple Zol Mala, I think last time. We did, and a bit of a swap here. Oh. Hydra and Blue Wolf King yeah, entirely on the new stuff. Spockling. Yeah, I want to see how they play with this. They, I mean, they were they were doing a lot before last game with the new abilities. The other side, everything's pretty normal. We've seen how already how Scruffy and Sand and Mal and Zul play out. Yep, and uh, look at that adaptation from uh, Blue Wolf King uh, Spockling in the second game. Ah, yes, they figured it out. The six thousand. Yep. Actually, I'm not sure if that's figured it out or if they just chose to go for that one instead. Yeah, yeah. U ultimately, right. The uh, the decision behind it 
uh, had been made initially, and then the second game, for whatever reason, they decided to go for uh, a little bit of a different uh, position. More than likely but... a Jari, because the problem, the problem that you have with Aru is that you can only build on Rootway, which means that if you're not in a position where you can defend because of the tower nearby, or because, well, granted, 2v2 is both, but still, if you can't easily defend, which with the Jari, you can, or, or Karath, you can, because the you can just build the Legion Hall anywhere you like. A Jari can't, or sorry, Aru can't do that. Yeah. So it's harder yeah. to protect the further, the front expansion. Not impossible. But, I mean, Scruffy's going for it, but it's just a little bit more difficult. Let's see now. We see a pretty, pretty standard setups, all things considered. These first couple of moments before the turrets are online, they are online now at the 145 mark. Um, allowing for TFOS to scout, you know, kind of expected things. Double ether, I think, across all four. One, two, three, four bases. Uh, and yep. I believe I counted that correctly. And then that the expansion and uh, get some dudes. Double ether, double production after expansion. Let's see. Seems to be a pretty solid. That's, that seems to be where players are going right now. For mm. just kind of a general purpose safe opener. Partial exception being, in fact, Spockling. Though, it could be they're just saving up. Actually, it could be they're saving up for a second or a third, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, they uh, have enough for it. A few Ajari units on the way, though Safari are going to be scouting along with Hydra's Fast Hunters, and they are going to go start this camp. So Teapot did spot them out, and there is a small number of stalkers on the way, but I don't really think they're going to do much here. Ah, they've got some friends. Now they're doing the job. Oh, uh, Mass Hunter down. Oh, Sapari, careful. That's another loss. The micro there was beautiful from Santa. I think they just got four units. Granted. Three. Five. Units inexpensive, but yeah, that was uh, well done. The micro just on display from Team Fire. Beautiful. All right, there's the Soul Foundry. I was expecting that from... I was expecting that from Spockling. We have the Neurocyte coming in from basically everybody else. But the tech is taking a little while. Godheart for everyone as... No, everyone but Hydra. Hydra! Are they... What are they going for? Not Godheart. Maybe a bunch of offering Mast Hunters? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's Curious. interesting, uh... How these players decide to play this out. We have essentially roaming scout parties on either side, right? Kind of patrolling the map. There's a decently sized group of mass hunters from Hydra unseen and near Team Fire's bases. However, how quickly can they respond? How much damage can damage can Hydra do? Does he actually want to commit? He sends two hunters in alone. The response is nearly instantaneous. Now, those hunters kind of copy behind enemy lines, but there are friends on the way. Maybe this is a bait, a trap? Oh, tries to pick him over the wall, but does not work. Or it's just a way of figuring out how much army their opponents have. I mean, now they know that both their, oppon their opponents are just focusing heavily on tier one units. Yeah, that was interesting. Like mass uh, tier one units is a lot of information to get right there. Granted, that won't last long. Both of them got their guard hearts out. Oh, Dervish. Nice. Good adaptation. Those are going to be effective against both stalkers and hunters overall with their... Uh... High speed and strong cone abil uh, cone sort of auto attack, I should say, right? And the anti-light damage bonus. Exactly. They've got a lot going for them. Don't forget the fire. There you go. Uh, real quick, it's possible, Dom. Uh, we got a person in chat suggesting that the music might be incorrect. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. Keep it rolling. Sorry about that, everyone. But uh, we'll yep. get that fixed real quick and keep it going. Um... Yeah, overall, neither team has really committed to any strong blows so far. Scarfy has built up a couple more units, but I'm sure we'll see Team Ice reciprocate in kind. We do see that the Bone Stalkers have completed their upgrade, and, uh, ooh, whoop, might come to use here. This is gonna work. Oh, it's definitely gonna push back. I mean, Spockling is completely out of position from their teammate. 2v1, threatening that base, which has just finished up. And he dropped the Red Harvest. 
with something, yep. but Ravarsh on both sides. The Dervish, so look for the Dervish, both sides. people. If the Dervish, Dervish can get in, they'll do big damage, but right now they're That's not seeing if. the opportunity. It's a big if, two of them already gone down. All of them gone down, but one to the Resonance. And now there that last one, last one has gone as well. This base is, well, it's pretty much in jeopardy. It's its days are numbered. It's a matter of what can be salvaged from this fight for Team Ice. Oh boy, that is rough there for Hydra. He built that base and he got 30. 3-0 alloy before it went down. Uh, what would you say, Dom? Not worth? Not worth, no. Not worth. No, not 90% not, not loss like that. Generally not <laughs> considered a good business deal. Not at all. So, uh, how do you respond, Team Ice, here? The trick is that I their see. opponents kind of have vision on all sides. Even if they were to take this 3600, it would still be a question of how long it's going to take, which they are going to do, but how long it's going to take before this Red Scout here decides to tell Santa Claus, hey, by the way, there's a base over here. The answer is instantaneous. Do it immediately. So, of course, now, down Team Fire knows their opponents are on the back foot economically. They have to rebuild. They're going to be 350 alloy behind for doing any buildings for any units. Oh, uh, oh, that's a big hit. It is a big hit. The offering is coming through. Is the cancel going to happen? It is. Oh, immediately the base back. I mean, don't waste any time. You uh, push your opponents back. Trouble here. Oh, dear. It's oh, no. Sparkling got... Yeah, no. Close your eyes, no everyone. Resonance. There's nothing to see here. Hydra just getting a huge loss of value here. Just being 2v1. Sparkling was trying to send units to defend, and, or I should say attack, along with Hydra. However, intercepted in the middle of the map. And now Hydra being caught out means that free reign for Team Fire. I do not think Ice are even going to bother defending the space. Try to get the cancel off, but they are amassing as many forces as they can here, Dom. They got the pincer at any rate. That's it's gonna be hard to get out of here. They have to fight their way okay. out. I don't think that's yep. gonna be a threat. Some like, spells being lie. propped. Yep, you can see that the uh, as well. The device landing, but there's not really that much damage follow-up. And look at that, the Zephyr simply cannot get in range of these resonance. It is absurd. It's resonant mania here. As just the units can't even get their autos off. There you go. One. One hit from that Zephyr. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Yeah, Resonance are... Uh, Resonance are good. They're, they're, a, they're a solid unit. Yeah, they are literally animated. They are rocking. They are rolling. And they are coming for your bases. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Fire continuing to push here onto this expansion for... Sparkling, gonna do their best to defend it, but I'm not entirely sure it's got much life left in it. No, Sparkling is just, they are down to their main base. They have no moats around the map. They have been struggling to find some economy beyond, where, well, this main plateau. And even that is no longer safe. The production structure is a threat and Hydra is throwing in the towel and Sparkling follows soon afterwards. Walter team gets a 2-0 victory, moving on to the winner's finals. There you have it, folks. Well done to Santa and Scruffy moving on to the winner's finals. Uh, I really want to credit them. Something you mentioned was their dominant vision control throughout the game, where we saw a little bit of a different playstyle from uh, Hydraulics and uh, Magical. Uh, vision was absolutely the strategy that Santa and Scruffy went for, and it paid for them in spades. I'm excited to see how those two teams will match up uh, in these upcoming winner's finals. Well, you won't have to wait long, because this, that is up, who's up next? Back on the, the stream. In Walter versus Hydraulics and Magical. What would you like, uh, what's their shipping name, you know what I mean? Like, ma Magical Licks? Hydraulical? Magic Licks? I think Magic Licks. Mag <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to say that. <laughs> Scrub them up. Uh, Magic Licks, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's... That would work. I mean, I could be talking about cool guitar riffs. You don't know what I mean. Oh, true. Or like a... No, it's called Fun Sticks. Never mind. Like Fun Sticks is spelled like F-U-N-S-T-I-X, yeah. right? So, yeah. and Hydraulics is spelled with an X as opposed to... Speaking of Fun Sticks, though, <laughs> that is a good candy. Um, I don't think it, they sell that up here. Really? Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't had it like... 
find that my mind were there. I haven't had them in so damn long, but it is literally just a cane of sugar, if you don't know, and a bag of, you know, artificial sugar, and you kick the sugar on the sugar. Not recommended for anyone, ever, even if you're the child, but very delicious. Yeah, not gonna lie, that seems like a bad move. Yeah, don't. Eat healthy, folks. And drink a lot of water. So, uh, looks like we will be getting Magical and Hydraulics into the lobby in just a moment. Thank you all for your patience as we get oh, this match underway. No, there's... And, uh... Looks like, yeah, probably just gonna remake the lobby. Uh, in general, though, these players are amongst the elite we have currently in the immortal community that are particularly active uh and i think in a 2v2 setting well even with the most recent patch tom it's actually been a little bit since we've seen them play against each other True. uh so man this is i'm excited this is gonna be a treat a healthier treat too than a uh, fun sticks oh yeah more like cucumber yeah <laughs> not so fun but still a stick shape <laughs> Or celery, the bland stick. Hell, yeah, I feel like celery. I don't know. Both celery and, and, and cucumbers are healthy-ish, right? Like the nutritional content of them compared to like a stronger green. But they are stick shaped, which is like a positive. Yep. I'm sorry, I can't think. Of, I mean, I guess carrots. Carrots. But carrots have a lot of sugar in them, so I don't know. Yeah, really, like fructose, right? The uh, fruit sugar or I veggie think sugar. So I'm not 100 sure, but pretty sure they have they're not like the total sugar free vegetable you would expect i mean okay mm. vegetables have sugar humans just can't process it because cellulose is way too complex for digestive systems interesting okay i mean that's, that. that is what that is what vegetables are made of is cellulose like trees wood anything is cellulose which is a sugar but our bodies can't process it that's like you know, rabbits and cows and so forth can process it, but mm -hmm. it takes a long time. There's a reason cows have four stomachs, and that reason is cellulose. Today I learned. Today we learned. That's interesting. How do you know yep. that? I just, just find... I, I just sort of read things and remember them. Cool. Also, it's the reason why rabbits eat the same thing twice, and I won't describe exactly how they do that. Uh, Twitch, TOS, appreciates you, Dom. <laughs> Uh, totally not a voyeur in chat saying, this is my boomstick. Very good reference. Very good franchise, movies, actor. Groovy. Blow it all. Yeah. Oh, boy. You know, actually, speaking of groovy, this is like a tangent on top of a tangent, which is from a tangent. Um, I've never seen a single Austin Powers movie. Not one. You're not missing a lot. Really? Well, okay. That's not entirely true. I say that having enjoyed them as a child... Mm -hmm. I would say they are Mike Myers' best work. Okay. I... Take that as you will. Yeah, the, I am. Um... The second one is probably the best. Mm -hmm. Well, the second one's the most iconic. The second mm -hmm. one's the one that everyone talks about because it has Mini-Me in it, and it has a, like, a bunch of stuff to do with the weird lore of its own world. The first one's probably the best setup for the actual like as a movie okay that's interesting i uh yeah but the yeah, second I, one's I'm... like they, they really figured out how to make it oops yeah. uh... they really they kind of have a better idea of how they were setting up all their comedy and everything and it, if you watch both back to back there's some repeated things but overall I th i'd say that it does work out okay The See. third movie, however, you can skip to that. Okay. Good to know. Have yeah. you, uh, I'm, I'm currently in the lobby. The right lobby? I want to make sure. Are you? Well, I'm not hosting anymore because I had to restart my social client. Uh, yeah, go ahead and see if you can join. The lobby name is a bunch of numbers. Break the well, stream. No, well break the made, stream. people. Because it's scruffy and sound. You're watching the lucid bracket match. Uh, I no, I think the. The Bemnex is lucid bracket. Casters are both together, folks. If I am Why are in you the same lobby, I'm also expecting uh, We've got Femnex, Drago, Hydra, and... No, oh, that's Luz's bracket. That's Luz's semifinals. I'm trolling. Sorry, guys. 
I'm so mega trolling. I mean, I'm passing you the stream view, the stream view, so you can use that too. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's I've been using too. Lol. Uh, okay. Give me just two seconds. But I, I but also yes, like you're in a lobby like to... with players in that are playing the tournament. It's just. I honestly forgot. I, 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 I the, the quality of the caliber of players was so high. <laughs> you down. forgot. You forgot. The your your, your compelling lost. story about Austin Powers. The entire time, I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Like, should I focus on the stream or should I focus on Austin Powers? Clearly, Austin Powers is too hypnotizing, and that's why I haven't watched it yet. I'd simply be enthralled.